Welcome to part two of the video writing series for this artist major course. I'm Mike Lemire. In part two, we will get into the English writing lesson. This basically supports Papa 930.05 English writing. We're going to discuss the writing standards, the expectations for the course, and more importantly, how do I begin the writing assignment, the process involved in writing here at the course. So the standards. Obviously, we know that the written message must be clear and concise. You have to get your point across in a single rapid reading. And you are writing to persuade. You want the, to convince the audience that your position is valid. Now, how do I get started? Where do I go from? I have my topic, now what? Well, there's a process we're going to talk about, and you will see in the Papa 930.05 lesson. <clears throat> called mind mapping. So to get started in generating ideas, you'll go through the process known as mind mapping. Now this is one method. It will probably work for those of you that haven't written in quite some time. What you do is you take the topic that you want to write about. Let's say I'm going to write about Emory Upton during the Civil War. I'm going to write down everything I know during the mind mapping process as quickly and as rapidly as possible without Without thinking about it, without trying to discriminate between ideas, I'm just going to jot down everything I know about Emory Upton and the Civil War. Now this could be quite extensive, or it may be just a few items. It depends on what my basis of knowledge is for that particular individual event or battle. <clears throat> now during this mind mapping process, this is what that might look like. We don't want you to organize, categorize anything yet. You're just writing down ideas. What this does is it helps you distinguish the gap between what you know and what you need to find out about the topic. So in this case, if your topic was environmental awareness, and this will be a practical exercise during the lesson in English writing, you will jot down everything you know about environmental awareness, whether it applies to your specific purpose and audience or not, because you may generate some new ideas that will take you down another path. Now what you do next, once you have those ideas mapped out, is you begin to group them into like categories. So you'll, you will find relationships among the mapped ideas that you wrote down during mind mapping, and you will group them into like categories. The recommendation here is at least two groups, but not more than five. Try to find distinction between groups there should be no overlap. And this is what that might look like for the example with the environmental awareness. So in this case, the example shows five distinct groups. All of those individual items that we, we wrote down during mind mapping have now been categorized into light groups. And what this does, it helps us approach the writing assignment. It gives us some, some generalities, some direction to go with our research. And perhaps when we get to writing this particular assignment, we may eliminate two of these categories and focus on three. As we do our research, we may discover more categories. But again, this is just a step to get you started to get those creative juices flowing, so to speak, as you, as you approach the writing requirement. And we talk about research, perhaps one of the most important aspects um, of a persuasive essay is quantitative and qualitative evidence to support your thesis. Now let's talk a little bit about valid sources versus invalid sources. So of course your local library, community library, brick and mortar, the old-fashioned library that contains all the books that we all grew up with. Uh, the Learning Resource Center here at the Sargis Major course is an example of that. Uh, if you were a student here in the resident course, you would have access to look to the LRC uh, in your local communities. You can uh, basically visit the local public library. Now, of course, much of the material contained in libraries has been digitized over the last 10 or 15 years. Um, one great resource that is currently consolidating information from di digital databases around the country is called the Digital Public Library of America, DPLA. So I recommend that as a good starting point. 
Um, but there are many other digital libraries. Combined Arms Research uh, Library, for instance, at uh, Fort Leavenworth has a digital uh, resource material for a lot of your military uh, research that you're going to do. Now the internet, obviously, is probably one of the most common sources of information today in the digital age. I just caution you to be careful and ensure that you vet your sources appropriately. Make sure that what you're citing, the information that you're using, is coming from a credible source. Some recommended sources for that, Google Scholar, uh, ResearchGate, uh, the website of an organization specifically, like the Department of Defense, Department of the Army websites, are um, credible sources. Wikipedia, however, is not considered a credible source. That doesn't mean you can't begin your research and use Wikipedia as a secondary source to find primary sources. And, and what I mean by that is when you go to Wikipedia, much of the information you see there uh, has notations by it with the source document listed at the bottom. I would encourage you to basically look up the source document, use that as your primary source. Avoid using Wikipedia in your reference page. Be careful about personal blogs. I have seen students in the past go to a blog site that was started by an individual who had a very strong opinion about something and quote or paraphrase that individual's blog. The, the question is, what is that person's credibility? What, is their, what are their credentials to be an expert on that particular subject matter? So make sure that the source that you're using um, basically is supported by a credential or peer-reviewed or professional publication. You can use your personal experience in some cases, particularly when you're writing the personal experience paper. Newspapers, magazines, again, uh, published sources are great sources of information. Some of the basic skills in your writing. It's important that your essay be organized. It must contain quantifiable substance. You must be able to basically measure the uh, ability with which your information supports your thesis. It can't just be, I feel really strongly about this topic, this is my opinion based on my experience, that's great. Many commanders may accept that. However, if you can bring information to bear showing supporting evidence, sir, here's what the regulation says, here's what other organizations have done in this situation, here's what worked and what hasn't. Think about those things as you, as you write your essays during the course. Give examples of what has and has not worked. Again, your writing must be clear and direct. Army writing style here, we want to write in the active voice as much as possible. We'll talk much more about that in a future segment. How to identify passive voice, how to make it active, and why it's important to write in the active voice. That concludes this segment. Thank you for watching.